Hey everyone, uh, welcome to another edition of Danny's Hot Takes. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Codex Space Marines and all their glory. Oh, that's so good! I know we're very, we're both very excited about this. This is a, this is pretty cool. You know, any any time you get one of these super iconic armies getting redone, it changes like the entire meta. It changes like what's good. And since Marines have been kind of bottom of the pile for a little bit here. Like, moving to something that's going to be really powerful is going to be an impressive shakeup of what's good. So, and I think this book has it. I really do, too. All right. So, uh, let's dig in. Uh, we'll just open up this bad boy here. First of all, let me just say, this book is very thick. Yes. T-H-I-C-C -C thick, if you know what I mean. Um, but uh, uh, it's got tons of rules. Uh, which is really awesome. In fact, I would say almost half of the book is rules, which is really great. Um, and if you want to get a c catch up on the lore, we're going to be doing a lore review on our next Mob Rules podcast um, for this book and the, uh, and the accompanying supplements as well. Um, so let's go over first some of the basic rules that Space Marines have. Um, they still have the chapter keyword, which is a little bit definable, and we can do that a little bit, or we can talk about that a little bit later on, where you can have customized chapter tactics. Dude, I'm, I'm so excited and also so fearful for that. <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll just have to see how that turns out. I think it's going to be really good. I um, too. I think it's still going to be better mostly to take the uh, first founding uh, uh, chapter traits, um, but, you know, if you want to customize your Space Marine chapter and make it unique, I think there's probably some play in some of the other ones as well. Yeah, I really appreciate them putting that in for us. For sure. Which is great. And it kind of harkens back to that 4th edition Space Marine Codex that allow you to pick different uh, advantages and disadvantages for your, uh, for your chapter, which was really cool. Um, but one thing they did get is they consolidated a few rules into one rule called the Angels of Death rule. So they consolidated the And They Shall Know No Fear Bolter Discipline Beta Rule, which is now like a straight up hard rule, which a lot of which a lot of other armies well not a lot. I mean I guess like a few other armies have access to that rule. Yeah, um, like chaos. Power armor. Yeah, sure, sure. Well, except for sisters. That we know of. Well yeah, sure, they could get it too. Um, so it has rules uh, kind of how that works. Uh, and these these have not really changed very much. Um, uh, in addition uh, we've got the Shock Assault Rule, which they previewed a little bit ago. Awesome rule. And that's going to be given so to good. everybody with Power Armor as well. Yep. So uh, that'll be really powerful. Yeah, and you get to go ahead and, you know, get that one extra attack on the charge, being charged, oh, or heroically huge. intervene. That's massive. Huge. Yeah. And it's like, even if you get charged, you still get that. That's going to be amazing. And then finally, we have Combat Doctrines. Now, they previewed Combat Doctrines, but didn't really go into too much on how they worked, especially some of the specifics. So specifically... Anybody who has Angels of Death also has combat tactic, or uh, combat doctrines. And your entire army has to have the Angels of Death rule in order for you to get combat doctrines. So you can't take allies and get the benefits for that. But everything in this book has combat doctrine. It has uh, Angels of Death. So you're going to be good with your vehicles, um, uh, which, is, which, is, which is really interesting, which is really great. That's really strange, actually, because they removed the bolter, beta bolter rule from vehicles because they were too powerful. Right, but they'll still get Angels of Death, uh, which means they get Shock Assault, so they get plus one attack. Oh, Repulsors! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Time to run some people sweet, over, baby. Sweet seven attacks on the charge. Exactly. Um, and the, uh, the uh, combat doctrines work where you start in Devastator Doctrine, and then on turn two, you can move to Tactical Doctrine. And then turn three, you can move to Assault Doctrine. But you don't have to. You can no, stay you can Devastator, stay the, Devastator the whole game if you want to. So awesome. Which is really great. The problem is, is once you're at an Assault, you're stuck at Assault. Mostly, that's true, yes. With a few exceptions. If you've only made it this far through the book, you are stuck at Assault. Yeah, fair enough. All right. So, uh, and these give you an additional minus one AP to various weapon types. So Devastators for heavy weapons and also uh, grenades, I believe. Yep, grenades. Uh, and then Tactical is Assault and Rapid Fire weapons. And then Assault, or I'm sorry, yeah, Tactical is Assault and, and Rapid Fire. And Assault, 
which you would think assault weapons would be there, but they're not. Wh whatever, that's fine. Uh, that's for pistols and close combat weapons, and that'll give them an additional AP as well. Note, this is not stackable with any other form of AP in the book unless, unless specifically mentioned. So, you're unable to use this with the Storm of Fire Warlord trait, which a lot of people have thought, oh yeah, man, I can get like minus three on my bolters and stuff like that. That doesn't quite work that way, and they did think of that, which is great forward thinking on their part. Wow. All right, so let's dig in uh, some of the data sheets. Now, um, we're probably going to go through some of these data sheets pretty quickly because there hasn't been a ton of stuff, but... Mentioning a couple things is important, I think, um, since so many of these models have uh, Angels of Death, uh, like, it's something to think about that all of these models have an extra attack in the first round of combat. That's a really big deal. Um, so that means your Primaris Captain is swinging in with six attacks. Uh, yeah. That's pretty beefy. Or your regular Captain with five attacks, which is also really good. Yeah, I'm really liking it. Yeah. So uh, I, think there's some, I think there's some really great stuff here. Um, uh, the Captain in Gravis Armor, uh, I believe, did go down a little bit in points, and he's a massive seven-wound model, which yeah, is pretty awesome. T, T5. Yeah, yeah, T5 on him as well. Um, and I think he actually went up a wound as well. I don't think he was at seven before. I'm pretty sure he was at six. And that's something that we're going to talk about with Gravis Armor throughout this book, because they all got an extra wound. Well, they should, because Gravis Armor is not only just good-looking on the table, <laughs> but... I felt I've always felt that Gravis armor was kind of underpowered. Eminently functional, uh, uh, yeah, for sure, and and that's great because those guys could definitely use it. Um, so they did include all the stuff from Shadow Spear in here, like the Captain of Phobos armor as well. Uh, you got your typical, your atypical Captain and teleport armor, uh, or sorry, in teleport armor, Terminator armor, which it? gets to teleport. Yeah, let's call it what it is: teleport armor. Yeah, is what teleport it is. armor. Um, you got your Cataphracti Captain still. Uh, you still got your Captain on the bike and your regular Captain. You've got Lieutenants, which have not changed. Um, you've got uh, Primaris Lieutenants and Lieutenants in Phobos Armor. Uh, the Lieutenants in Phobos Armor are pretty cool. They have the Terror Troops rule now, um, oh. like Reavers. Nice. And so Terror Troops works differently now. Oh. It's minus one for every unit of Reavers within six. Oh, so it's stackable? Yeah, up to minus three. So it's like the Night Lord's uh, Legion trait, Oof. which is really cool. I really like that as well. And he's got, uh, uh, let's see here. He's got the uh, uh, company. Oh, yeah, he's got the uh, uh, smoke grenades. Still has got tactical precision. Uh, uh, he's got the terror troops. And... And you can equip them a little bit differently because there's a new primary, there's a new uh, lieutenant in Phobos armor coming out as well. The guy who's jumping over the smoke grenade with the cool face. Ah, yes. Yeah, the one that they previewed and blurred out all the other non-primaris lieutenant models. You know what? I really love some of the stuff they do at GW, and it makes me laugh. For like, sure. Uh, librarians went down significantly in points. No! Which is great. Um, the normal librarian went to 80 points, which is awesome. That's an eight-point decrease. Wow. Um, which is, I think, super nice, and I'm really glad to see that. That's, uh, that's, we, a, that's a great We should role. preface this by saying that Danny has had this book for about five hours, and in that time frame made a spreadsheet to compare exactly which units were what and which <laughs> units went up or down. So if you ask nicely, he might share it with you so you know exactly what the changes are. <laughs> You're going to have to ask really nicely, though. <laughs> um, uh, Primaris Librarian also went down. Uh, chaplains stayed the same. Now, chaplains are way different. Now, we'll get into their uh, litanies of battle uh, a little bit later uh, in, the, in, in this recording. But suffice to say, they're very similar to the Dark Apostles, um, and they have some good ones. So do they also, do we all, are we also getting devotees to carry around their stuff with them? False. I, at I, least, I was asking. It's not a true or false question. Oh, no, sorry. No, we are not, unfortunately. That's a shame. Or at least we don't know about yet. One thing about this book that's very interesting, there are no named characters in here whatsoever. So all the named characters are going to come in supplements. Hmm. So even though they say that there's six supplements, I wonder if they're going to have to combine some of them together. Like maybe do an Imperial Fist supplement that's like all the Imperial Fist successors as well. Because they're only supposed to do six, and there's eight chapters in here to cover. So, like, maybe do Crimson Fist, Imperial Fist, and Black Templar in one book? Well, I mean, they could just leave Black Templar out. Nobody, oh, yeah. No, nobody, no, nobody, nobody plays those guys. Freaking God Squad over there. All right. Uh, so, we've got Tech Marines, Librarians, uh, in Phobos Armor, in Power Armor, in Terminator Armor, and Chaplains, uh, thusly armed as well, except not in Phobos Armor. I would love to see, a, uh, I, and I know it's not going to happen now because we've seen this book, but I would love to see some other uh, character models able to take uh, Gravis armor. 
Yeah, that'd be cool. Like a lieutenant in Gravis, a uh, chaplain in Gravis. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I would love to see that. But because it's not in this book, it ain't happening till 3.0. Yeah, sure. Or, maybe not, or not yet. They can release it whenever they want, really. Yeah, I mean. That's the beauty of having a living rule set, I guess. Yep. Um, uh, intercessors, pretty much exactly the same as they were before. Still awesome. However, uh, we'll go over the stratagems in a little bit. They are much better due to just stratagems. Just, just in general better. Yeah. But there's also a change where the, uh, the sergeant can now take a hand flamer. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're right, Dave. Because uh, that one model, I think, comes with one, right? The, uh, the special edition guy with, on the orc. Oh, maybe. He's killing the orc. I think he might I don't have know. One. I haven't been sent him yet by one of my loyal fans. Oh, is that guy in trouble? Did I just out him? No. Okay. No, no, no. Good. Um, so the tactical squad, surprisingly enough, went down one point. So they are now 12 points a model. Uh, See? <laughs> GW still loves regular powered space marines. Guys. Yes. Yeah, they're still and there's and they're still a good part of the book, and there's definitely some benefits to playing with them. They're gonna keep dropping them in points one at a time until they reach zero, and then they're gonna take them out of the book. So, <laughs> but until then, get as many of them on the table as you can. For sure. Now they did remove cru the Crusader squad from the troops' choices. Well, um, that's not surprising because, though, because yeah, it's gonna for sure. be in the non-existent Black Templar book. I'm right, sure. right, in the fictional Black Templar book. Right. Um, Infiltrators are more or less the same. They did add the uh, uh, comms, the infiltrator comms arrays. They did maintain the same points, so that's fine. Um, the comm arrays are pretty nice. Yeah, just, and they and they did preview those on GW's yep, website. So just allows you to have get free rerolls if you've got a comm, comms array. They did change something though, because in the Shadow Spear box that you have oh you to had take, to take a helix to that if you wanted the ten guys. Now, now you, you don't. don't. And if you don't, and the only way that you can take the comms array is if you don't take a helix to that. Yeah. And I really like that, because while the Helix Adept is cool, I really would rather have had, uh, because this squad has the ability to com um, uh, combat squad, I I'd really rather have had five and five sure. uh, actual infiltrators rather than five with one guy who could save the other four if need be. So I, I really I really like that. Uh, I don't think that's ground game breaking, but it's a nice little uh, aesthetical change. Oh, for sure. You're absolutely correct. And they also added the Incursor squad. Uh, and these guys are the new guys that they previewed that suffer no penalties to their hit rolls and ignore cover with their weapons. That are a troop choice, so you're going to take... Uh, somebody's going to build a unit of, like, six battalions uh, of just headquarters and these guys just to lay seven billion landmines. Oh, yeah, of course. Because uh, one squad can take... Each one can take one haywire mine. Yeah. So that's... Uh, At, like, ten points a model, I think. Like, and these guys are uh, 19 points a model. So okay. there are a couple more points than the uh, 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 see, five, intercessors. Yeah, yeah. So intercessors still your best troop choice option unless you're looking for cheapies, in which case. Yeah, you got you got a bunch of options. You can choose whichever one you like the most. It's the intercessors because okay. they're the best. Intercessors are great. Scouts are also good, especially with sniper rifles. They are, um, and they also didn't change. So yeah, they're they're identical. Yep, they, they've been they've been the same. They'll continue being the same. Um, Primaris Apothecary, Normal Apothecary, uh, I think that they're the same. Um, I didn't notice this before, and I didn't check into it by checking my previous Space Marine Codex, maybe because I burned it. But uh, <laughs> if you fail the roll to bring a guy back from, from the dead, the Apothecary can't do anything else that turn. He can't shoot, he can't charge, he can't fight. So just something to be aware of if you're trying to resurrect a guy. Interesting. Yep. Um... There's a Primaris Ancient and a Company Ancient. However, they did remove the Chapter Ancient from uh, the list of available options. Huh. Um, the Chapter Ancient, uh, I believe they, they kept him in the Ultramarines supplement, and we'll go over him uh, a little bit, but he still does exist in that supplement. Um, so these guys uh, play almost exactly the same. Uh, they get the, uh, if a guy dies, you get to shoot or fight with him again uh, on a four-up before he goes. Yep. Uh, company Champion... Uh, pretty close to the same. Has a Mastercrafted Power Sword, which is a good weapon. Um, still has got four attacks. Um, still has a Combat Shield, which went down significantly. That went down, I believe, three points for the Combat Shield. So it's only one point now to give him that, which is which was nice. But a Combat Shield is not a Storm Shield, though. Correct. Right? It's a five-up Impulsive. Yeah. Okay. Um, company Veterans are the same. They're still Bodyguard, which is nice. Um, still, still good for that part. Uh, servitors... 
Uh, nothing really changed there. Um, this is a brand new entry, and so I ha we haven't seen this before, the Ancient and Terminator armor, oh. um, which is a new option. Um, really? And yeah. So basically just a, a guy carrying a banner, but in now in Terminator, now tougher. Right, and he has a Storm Bolter and Power Fist, which is nice, because that gives him a little bit more punch. How, how is he holding the banner with the Storm, or with the Power Fist? On his back. Or he's holding the banner in his fist. But that's not a model that currently exists. Now, the Blood Angels do have one, and, Death, and Deathwing also have one. So that's so, probably why it's included there. Potentially. Because they might, who knows, maybe they're just going to be supplements? I feel, bum, I feel, bum, like, bum. I feel like they <laughs> might, actually. I wouldn't be surprised. There's so many entries in the Ultramarine supplement that I wouldn't be surprised to see something like the Blood Angels or Dark Angels get folded in there. Yeah. Which would be fun. Especially when they primaricize all of the uh, characters from those. Man, I can't wait. Man, uh, uh, Primaris, uh, uh, the Primaris Asriel, it would get me... Mm, mm. All right, anyway. Uh, so Terminator squads. Now, Terminators in this are great. Well, I mean, everything in the special rules for this army made Terminators just better and, like, just, just amazing. You get better AP on their Storm Bolters from uh, the, uh, what are they, not doc Doctrines, right? Right. Yeah. And then you have uh, angels. Of, you've got the uh, shock assault, so getting plus yeah. one attack. They were already so good in close combat. For, speaking yeah, with. so for a unit that just got better in general, amazing. In addition, uh, they have a special stratagem that is also very good for a very low CP cost. Um, okay. So uh, that's that. We'll, and we'll, we're going to believe me. We're going to spend some time on the stratagem section. Did anything else on their data sheet? Change? No, nothing else changed on their data sheet. Okay, because I know that some things have had noticeable changes that people didn't notice. Sure. Originally. Uh, like Terminator Salt Squad, same. Okay. Uh, Cataphracti, same. Uh, same with Tartaros. Uh, Vanguards are the same, still amazing. Uh, the Vanguard on foot went down a point. And Stern Guard went down two points because the special issue Bolter is now free. Oh. So there are 14 points a model, which I think is a great deal for what you get. For an AP two, minus two Bolter that goes to AP minus three with the Doctrines up. Oh, yeah. And then they have that great stratagem that still exists where they get plus one to wound. They're, yeah, they're solid. Yeah. Um, Ironclads and Dreadnoughts both went down. Uh, like, the Dreadnought went down 10 points. Uh, the Ironclad also went down 10 points. And all their close combat weapons went down, like, 10 points. Wow. So, like, you can definitely easily get a sub-100 point Dreadnought with, like, uh, you know, uh, like a assault cannon and close combat weapon. Uh, I mean, that's definitely doable. Or Great. maybe not sub 200, or 100, but pretty close to 100 points. Good, I hope Tyson doesn't listen to this. Oh, I'm going to be telling him all about it. Oh. <laughs> and Dreadnoughts get a great stratagem. That, I mean, I can't... So this book has 34 strats, so... 36, right? Oh, I thought it was 34. I, I thought I counted, but maybe I'm wrong. It's a lot. Ooh, maybe there's two hidden ones in the box. Yeah, maybe there. there's some secret cards. ones, yeah. Um, there's no chapter-specific ones in here either. Those are all going right. to be in supplements, which is fine. Um, Venerable Dreadnoughts uh, went down. Contemptor stayed the same. Redemptor stayed the same. No, I wanted Redemptors to go down. Sorry, Dave. By like 100 points each. Yeah, not going to happen. Now, the Invictor Tactical Warsuit. Let's talk about that for yes, a moment. Yes, let's talk about it. So, did, so you, did you figure out the points? First off, tell me the points on it. Oh, uh, no. He's 90 points base. Um, his guns are, I think it's... Uh, 10 points for the two Iron Hail Stubbers. The Fist is free. The Heavy Bolter is a Heavy Bolter, so that's 10 points. And I think his uh, side gun is like 20 points, something like that. So, so I'm thinking like 120 to 130. We can, we can definitely verify that when we get to that section in the back. Um, but he's, oh, and he's got the Frag Launcher on top, so that's four points. Um, if you take that. Oh, is it optional? Isn't it optional? No, it comes on him. Okay, never you mind. You have no choice. You have zero choice, Dave. But uh, who forcing cares? Out, uh, forcing those missile launchers on us again. <laughs> um, so, great model, right? Now, he has the uh, he has the concealed positions rule, so he does get to infiltrate onto the board, which is awesome. Which should be worth like 200 points <laughs> by itself. Uh, it's pretty good, especially with a big vehicle like that. Basically, the big difference between him and a Redemptor is that he's only toughness 6, the Redemptor is toughness 7. You know what the difference between him and a regular Redemptor is? The regular Redemptor is powered by a dude in permanent pain all the time, so he's continuously screaming so he can't sneak up the field. <laughs> Whereas this is powered by a live uh, Primaris Space Marine, 
and he knows he's got the sneak skill, so he's just doing this. Sneak, sneak, oh sneak, yeah, because he's, well, he's in Phobos armor, little right? Little tiptoes, right up behind him. That does make sense. Yeah. Um, I think he's really great. Uh, I think you can. I think I could definitely make a case for for taking several of these in my army. You mean between one and three because he maxes out at three. Sure. So. But I mean, I don't think you'd want to just take one. I think you'd want to take a couple. Oh yeah, no, no. And uh, sure. I really like the twin hail auto cannon instead of the uh, uh, the flamer. Well, the flamer is really Ooh, good. Really? Oh Fl yeah. The flamer's just it's a twelve inch auto hit. I mean. But I just want to stick him close to an objective and have him hang out and hopefully in cover and just blow stuff away with the auto cannon and not have to worry about being close. Now, does he have the denial twelve inch range? No, he does not. Okay, so only infiltrators have that. So if you pair him up with the squad of infiltrators, I think that's a great way to kind of hold a side of the board. I ask because the model itself has the identical antennas. The infiltrators have. Oh, the, the omniscramblers. So, yeah, the omniscramblers hmm. antennas. So maybe he had like a really big one, which was like a forty-two inch denial range. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny. Oh, that's why. He's, that's how he's able to be so sneaky. Is nobody can get close to him. To that sneak. must be the only thing, yeah. Dave. That's all. That's all that makes sense. Just um, Reavers. Uh, Reavers went down two points a model. Nice. Uh, which is great. Uh, they've got three attacks, now four on the charge, which is nice. Um, so they got an extra attack then? Well, they have... Uh, oh, no, because the combat knife granted an extra one. They've only got two base attacks with one for the combat knife and then one for on the... Shock assault. Attack. Yeah. So four. Yeah, okay. okay. Which is good. Uh, kept the same thing on the grav shoot. Um, it's where they get to deep strike. Yep. Uh, and then same thing on the, uh, on the grapnel launcher as well. Grab shoot's better than grapple launcher, in my opinion, but... I like the grab. I actually like the grapple launcher myself. If I was going to pick, that's what I would choose. Like, I still get to come in on the board, off the, off the, but just on the, on the board right. edge. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, they're still good with the... Uh, I would, and I would also consider taking the bolt carbines over their other weapon, because I think that's better. Uh, yeah. Because then you could just get some shooting on them as well, and they still get three attacks, then. Uh, the aggressors. Now, aggressors, I think, are probably one of the units that made out the best in this book. They certainly did. Yeah. So no points change. So they're the same points as they were before. They went up to three wounds and three attack space. So that means on the charge, they're getting four attacks per model uh, with their power fists, which are awesome. Uh, and uh, their, auto, their auto bolt storm gauntlets uh, are still uh, just as good the, as they yeah, were Yeah, they're just as good. So, uh, really solid, man. Really solid. But so uh, they got an extra wound and yep. an extra attack. Yep. Which means that a squad of three, which used to have seven attacks on the charge, now has uh, eleven. If my math is right, no, uh, thirteen. Thirteen attacks. On thirteen the, attacks on the yeah, charge for three of them. For three, that's nuts. That's really good, and it, that's like just barely more than a hundred points. So like, disgusting. Really good. Um. Dave, do you remember if Centurions were four wounds apiece? I thought they were three before. I don't, because I've never seen them on the table in 8th edition. All right, well, they have four They have four wounds and three attacks, so that means four attacks on the charge. They have siege drills, which are no minus to hit, so they have four strength strength 10 minus, minus four three flat damage attacks. That seems amazing. Like, I think they're really solid. So and Centurions you can give them, are going to see the table again? Yeah, and they went down in points as well. I mean... They were always good in the, uh, uh, what was it? It wasn't Siegebreaker Cohort, was it? Um, yeah, Siegebreaker Cohort is what they're in right now. But those are the Devastators. I think the Assault ones definitely have a place, especially if you can get them into combat. Okay. Like out of a Land Raider or something similar, which also went down a point. I mean, like maybe a four-up invuln floating uh, carrier? Well, that thing can't. That thing can't carry them. Okay. Yeah. Um... Bike Squad, uh, Bike Squad did not significantly change. Um, although you can still uh, you can still upgrade them to Chain Swords, which I thought was still a nice touch, especially if you're playing White Scars. I think that's a good yeah, choice. It's very fl fluffy and thematic. Mm -hmm. um, they're still really good. They're still really good. And again, great stratagem for them. Assault Marines uh, went, also went down a point, uh, which was nice. Yep. Uh, but again, that unit did not change either. I mean, these are these are units that weren't necessarily seeing a lot of tabletop play already. Nope. So that's that's good. Now, Inceptors did were not seeing play. I felt like, and now they got much better. Again, uh, Gravis armor, so they went up to that three wound mark, which is really nice. Yep. Um, they still have the uh, uh, crushing charge, 
Um, so they can uh, do some mortal wounds if they charge you. Yeah, there's a chance of it anyway. Yeah, on a six. Yeah, it's, which is not. It, not I mean, worst. it's something. Yeah, you know. it's, it's definitely something. Um, so uh, they still get a lot of shots with plasma execution exterminators. Um, they still uh, move pretty quick, and they and they still shoot a lot of shots. And now with the uh, uh, what are they the uh, doctrines? Yep. Uh, getting an extra minus one on their bolter shots means a bunch of minus two shots. So like six minus two, oh, yeah. strength five minus two shots is going to be awesome. Uh, I think suppressors are amazing. I was very surprised to see that they were still limited to three models in a, in a unit. Uh, I'm yeah. I mean. So and that's they're, fine. They're really good. Yeah, so, for sure. They're a big winner I mean, in this book, I think, altogether. The thing that disappointed me the most was seeing suppressors not go to six, and also seeing eliminators not go to six. But I get it, because if I can field three six-man squads of... Uh, oh, man, all your characters are dead. Yeah. Like, so. instantly. And I can see these guys, too, because in, in Devastator Doctrine, they're yeah. minus three AP. Yeah. <laughs> it's disgusting. Brutal. It's disgusting. All right. Uh, Scout Pikers, no still great. Yeah, Land Speeders great. went down again. Again? Yeah, they're 45 points a model now. I thought that was pretty that's, reasonable. Is that with weapon loadout? No, that's okay. base. So you're looking at like, what, 60, 70 points for a Land uh, 55 guy? points with a heavy bolter. That's that's reasonable. That seems pretty good for something that can come sweeping in and, and hold an objective. And they're really objective. fast at movement 16. Yeah. Um, and uh, you can do some you can do some cool stuff with them. I think they're not, they're not great, but they're not terrible. Yeah. Uh, they're like playable now, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I'd like to see people bring them in an army, like so that I can I can see exactly how they work. You can take a unit to three, and there's a stratagem that works on bikers as well as them, uh, that that can boost their invulnerable save or can give them an invulnerable save, which is very powerful. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, attack bikes, same difference, no change there. Devastator squads, uh, surprisingly enough, did not go down in points. They stayed 13 points. They were already seeing the tabletop in a lot of lists, and they the CW is paying attention to that sort of stuff. So that absolutely, which is which is great. I'm glad that they are. Yeah. That that makes total sense to me. Um, the Armorium Cherub is no longer a model that you can kill, so you can't like put a wound on the Armorium Cherub before it, you know to like slough off like a oh, big nice. hit. Which I thought was good. You may want to consider taking these guys with graph cannons. I don't know. That's something to consider now. I think that there's some play there. In with graph cannons? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Uh, which is cool, because I have a bunch of them with grab cannons from 7th edition. <laughs> uh, Centurion Devastator Squad, so good. So good. Like, they were good before. Um, I think they're going to continue to be good. Um, sure. Uh, especially with their recent uh, points reduction and Siegebreaker cohort rules. Um, we'll see if they continue to be, uh, like, kind of a one, kind of a trick. Like, I mean, they're a gimmick list right now, kind of, but I think that there's some play there. Um, so we'll have to I, see. Yeah, I, uh, I agree. How that works out. Uh, eliminators, uh, they really went over eliminators very highly um, in this, uh, or in the last preview. Um, so they did upgrade their uh, their weapon strength to five. Oh, so good. Yeah, very good. Huh. And then they also gave uh, one of them, uh, you can give the sergeant an instigator bolt carbine, uh, which we didn't see the stats on before, but is a one shot strength four minus one two damage weapon. Okay, so that that's something. pretty good. And then he can sacrifice his shooting to give everybody else plus one to hit, plus one to wound. Which I think is really which good. Which is pretty nice, yeah. yeah. Especially since last fusils are really freaking expensive. Um, they're really pricey. They're well, 15 can, points a model. You can do a Phobos Captain in concealed positions right up with them, so sure. getting that reroll to ones, so now you're hitting on ones. Or hitting, hitting on, on twos, twos rerolling ones with these guys, which yep. is pretty solid. Which is really cool. And Camel Cloaks, of course, make them uh, ridiculously hard to shift out of cover. Yeah. Hellblasters did not change. That's a unit that I think people played with before and I think it's will continue seen, to play with. Yeah, it's it's going to continue to see play, especially um, in Dark Angels lists. So. For sure. And uh, their weapons are the same uh, for the most part. Um, minus four doesn't really benefit from any uh, additional minuses, so minus, going to minus five IP doesn't matter that much. Uh, Thunderfire Cannons had a couple of uh, interesting rules. I did just buy one of these, Danny, so... so <laughs> Break it gently to me. Okay, so the nice thing about them is they're a two plus armor save, uh, all around, and you and once the tech marine crews the gun, you can't shoot the tech marine at all until he uncrews the gun. Uh, so it's toughness six with four wounds, and he has four wounds as well. Now I believe that the previously the tech marine gunner only had two wounds, uh, which was which was which is a nice which is a nice change. Yeah, it is. Um, he has like full tech marine status now at only twenty six points. 
Yeah. So, which is great. Um, the Hunter and the Stalker, uh, the, uh, the Sky Spear Rocket is strength 9. Uh, I think it was strength 8 before. Um, and is minus 3d6 damage. Uh, you can give them a, a stratagem to, get, to make their weapons even better against flyers. Um, and then the, uh, the uh, uh, Icarus Autocannon uh, on the Stalker gets heavy th is heavy 3. So it's basically exactly the same as the normal Autocannon, except it gets plus 1 to hit against flying models and minus 1 it's to hit otherwise. It's the same as the one on the Executioner. Right? On the Executioner? Yeah. Oh, the Primaris Executioner. Yeah, the Repulsor Executioner. It has strength seven guns on the back. I oh, no, it's strength only four. strength four. Yeah, it has a three-shot auto can that's strength seven. Okay. Pretty good. Whirlwinds, uh, same points. Um, still a solid bad. unit. Yep, still not bad. Uh, Predators uh, are the same. Um, keep in mind, these all have gotten better due to the inclusion of getting chapter tactics. Yes. So something to consider when you're looking at any of these things is how does it work better in my army? And maybe, like, what are the changes that that... Is, what, are the, what are some of the changes that add, that influences? Like, Predators can fall back and shoot now if they're Ultramarines. That's a big deal. Yeah. That makes them a lot better and a lot less vulnerable to getting uh, getting hugged. Um, Vindicators went out for five minute, for five points. I'm not really sure what that's about. Uh, I thought that was interesting. Hmm. Um, they're still good. Uh, still Toughness 8, which is nice. Uh, land Raiders went down... Basic Land Raiders went down 20 points. Uh, which I thought was cool. That yeah. might make them a little bit more fieldable. And uh, the standard Godhammer uh, pattern la uh, Land Raider with the two Laz Cannons is not terrible. Not terrible at nice. all. And, uh, you know, get some durability boosts from the various different uh, chapter tactics. Now, the Crusader did stay the same. I thought that was a good choice. Yeah. Um, it stayed the same, and the Redeemer was already went down 20 points um, in the last chapter approved, so it stayed the same as well. Nice. Um, although I did not look at the stats for the Flamestorm Cannons, and they are the same. Cool. Okay. Uh, Repulsor Executioner uh, has not changed uh, no, again. No, but no that change since that the, literally uh, just came out, so the, no big the deal. 31 point bump. Right. Uh, Rhino went down five points. Razorback stayed the same. Note no. that neither of these can still carry Primaris models, which is to be right. expected. Um, the Drop Pod stayed the same. I was a little bit bummed out about that. I was really hoping I was going to get Primaris Marines and Drop Pods, oh. um, but still unable to take that. Um, the dream! Yeah, and still can't Deep Strike on the first turn, which is fine. Uh, oh, wait, hold on. I am wrong. <gasps> they did change the Drop Pod. You can take Primaris? No. Then match cares? play, this model and any units embarked on it are exempt from the Tactical Reserve match play rule. So that means they can come in on the first turn. Huh. That's amazing, actually. Wow. That could be very powerful. That's a huge game breaker. Being Man, able to ah, do, I don't know. Okay. Able, All right. Actually being able to have models come in first turn in Deep Strike. That's not bad. I like that's, it. That's, uh... Oh. That could be really good. Oh, man, I have a bunch of drop pods. Me too. Man, I might have to, I might have to play those in a couple weeks. Ooh. Uh, Landspeeder Storm went down in points again as well. Which is great because it's a cool model. Yep. And, uh, and it's not terrible. And the Repulsor stayed exactly the same, so there's no reason to talk about it at all. Go ahead and flip the page. Okay. The Repulsor went up 30 points. Damn it! So the Repulsor went up 30 points, which it makes perfect sense because it's a great model. And Yeah, it's pretty good. And GW sold enough of them already, so... <laughs> I think because of some of the ways that uh, various different units interact in there comparatively to how it worked before, yeah. I think that it becomes a lot more valuable. Yes, it does. And the Impulsor, which is the brand new thing and maybe even the star of this book, like, I uh, think these things are going to be a huge... I think people are going to take a ton of them. So, does the, does the Impulsor say that it cannot take... Does it say it can take only Primaris? Because I... Has a transport capacity of six chapter Primaris infantry models. Okay, so it is only Primaris. All it right. It cannot transport jump pack or Mark Ten Gravis models, so you can't put your uh, aggressors inside of it. Interesting. So intercessors, hell blasters. Yep. Uh, infiltrators. Uh, in in cursors. And, and in cursors are. And characters. That aren't in Gravis. Right. That's what can go in here. Not, I'm going to slap a Primaris Ancient in there now, just because, and watch, have him be like, watch the banner, getting in. <laughs> well, I think it has an open back, actually. I don't know, we'll have to see the Yeah, back. I haven't seen the back yet. Yeah, I've only seen it from the front, because these colors don't run. No, I did, I, <laughs> I think when we were having an open, an actual discussion in our team chat about this, and on other places, I, 
I do believe both you and I were in agreement. It would only be able to hold between six and eight. Yeah, we were guessing. We were guessing less models, and other people were like, "Oh no, it's totally going to be ten or twelve. Like Fifteen. Think about how many primary <laughs> you can cram in there. And I was like, "Dude, look I'm at the picture. I'm going to stack them it's, like cord It's like, like half cordwood. the size of a regular <laughs> repulsor, and the back half is taken up by huge <laughs> jets. So. Let's talk about its rules, Dave. Okay. Because uh, I, I, love its rules. I think this thing, like, literally might be the star of the book. I think that this becomes, like, a gimme if you're in your army. Oh, 100%. Agree. So, points, it's base 75 points. Yes. Um, the weapons are a little bit more. Uh, if you want to take the shield generator instead of the rocket pod on top, the, the shield generator is 18 points. And then Plus one. Four for the storm bolters. Four for the storm bolters, six for the, uh, the iron hail heavy stubber. Uh, I thought the Iron Hail Heavy Stubber was an option you didn't have to take. Maybe I read it wrong. Oh, no, you're right. You don't have to take it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I always would, though. I think I'd spend the six points. I think it's a good buy. I mean, maybe. Maybe not. I, I wouldn't take the Storm Bolters if I could help it. Just just take the vehicle itself? Yeah. Okay. I All mean, right. fair enough. You give it that four-up invuln, you slap some, some Hellblasters, uh, what, six I Hellblasters? I don't even necessarily think you have to stick anything in it. So the thing that I think about this is cool is that it's a flying transport that is fast. So this thing is 14 inches yep. for movement speed. That's four, four more huge. than a regular repulsor or repulsor executioner. Right. So it's, it's, it's super fast. It's very fast. It still has the, re the repulsor field, so you get a minus two inches to charge it. Yep. So at like a little bit less than 100 points, you could spread these out in front of your army and have a really great screen against deep strikers. Oh, yeah, that'd be really good. Because then they come in, they're minus two inches to their charge, you're not spending that many points, they're very fast, so you can push them out very quickly. Uh, I think these things are great for that. And they're tough, because they're still just as tough as a rhino, with the addition of having a four-up invulnerable save. Uh, and more wounds, don't they? They have the same amount of wounds. It's 11 it's wounds 11 and 11 wounds. wounds on the Rhino. Oh, the Rhino might be 10, I guess. Let me look. We're, we literally have the Codex. We can check. Okay. It has one more wound than a Rhino. Yeah. Okay. I guess I was thinking maybe like the Predators and stuff. I think they have 11 wounds. Um, yeah. Yeah. What and a great unit. With the Iron Hands Chapter Tactics, you also get, what is it, a 5-up Feel No Pain? 6-up. Six 6-up? Six yep. So you get a 6-up. Or there's a 5-up Feel No Pain in the, in the Make Your Own Chapter. Uh, there's against mortal wounds. Against mortals. Yeah. Oh, so like, just like just black, like black templars. Black templars. Yeah. Oh, so nobody would use that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you want good chapter tactics, you should stay, stay clear of those ones. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, the stormhawk interceptor went down ten points. I thought that was a good change. It is. Uh, so that's. I mean, they, nice. weren't, they weren't seeing a lot of play. I mean, most of the I, I haven't seen a lot of uh, space marine players oh. in just general. You know what we didn't talk about is the assault vehicle roll. Sorry, I'm we're going back yeah. to the we're going back no, to the impulsor. We love the, the impulsor, man. Let me tell you, this is a great vehicle. Maybe the best vehicle that there ever was. I, I'm lying. It's it's probably not, but it's very good. Um, the assault vehicle rule lets you move and then disembark troops. They just can't assault. That is such a that's such a critical ability to have. Yeah, it uh, is. Like you can push forward your lines so far and then also disembark models within three inches. Um, and like really push out a screen if you want to, and then you still get to shoot with those guys, so you can push them up in rapid fire like hell blasters. Yeah, and stuff that's like what that. I'm saying. Like if you have so once Azrael gets primarified, you slap five hell blasters and Azrael in one of these things, shoot it up the table, sure. and then pop out those hell, shoot three three tanks of them up the table, dump out your hell blasters Give it to with Azzy, and just light somebody up. Right, totally. I think that's yeah. Say so goodbye good. to your brand new Robo tanks, Guitari. <laughs> Sorry, I hope it was fun. Sorry your broodlord couldn't make the charge, Tyranids. Hilarious. Mm -hmm. uh, the Storm Raven and the Storm Talon did not change points. They stayed okay. the same, which were fine. Yeah. Yep. Um, but again, remember, all this stuff got chapter tactics, so that is yeah. huge. In addition to chapter tactics, they also have doctrines if you're playing pure Space Marines. Yep. So... Think about all the AP minus one shots that you get on these... Uh, on these... Uh, uh, hurricane bolter arrays and things like that. Like, it is nutty the amount of anti infantry firepower that Marines put out. The only thing the Marines should be scared of is tanks and dying quick, too fast, like, it dying in numbers so that they can't kill what they're supposed to kill before they die. Like, that is what Marines should be afraid of. Otherwise, they're going to kill everything. They're which so killy. Which is why you take nothing but primaries. Sure. All right. Um,. They refer to things as, and this is the war gear list uh, for various different things. I don't think anything has changed in here for options, which is not surprising, right? Um, 
Uh, Intercessor Sergeant weapons. Uh, Intercessor Sergeants can now take Thunder Hammers. I thought that was pretty neat. Uh, that can be really cool. Uh, I do have a build with White Scars where I can get an Intercessor Sergeant up to five attacks with a, with a five damage Thunder Hammer. But we'll go over that in the White Scars review, so... so Stay tuned and pay attention to yeah, that. Sometimes I think that a lot of these changes that we're seeing here are for more thematic for other armies. Sure. Like, uh, let, let's uh, Death Watch, lots of different stuff like that. Like, oh, yeah. Taking that guy in there, you know, giving him that. Um, uh, Blood Angels are all about lots of. I mean, you see Smash Blood Angels, Smash Captains everywhere. Oh, yeah. Now you can just have Smash Sergeants. Awesome. It's great. Jump, yeah. They jump right out of Impulsors. <laughs> yeah, because why not? Right? And then they go over the weapons uh, on the list here. Now, one thing I didn't have time to do is double check all the weapons and make sure that they're all the same. So I didn't go over that. And that's a lot of stuff to check. So if you want to check to see if they're the same or not, make yourself a screenshot right here and do a spreadsheet just like Danny did. But now we're going to turn the page because, yep. you know, nothing. We, we didn't get a chance to look at this. So we're just going to go ahead and, and have a good time, page, boys. Turn the page again. And then here it is. That's there it is. Enjoy. Yep. Uh, for anybody curious, uh, and uh, who's actually paying attention, uh, Aggressor Boltstorm Gauntlets went up to Strength 22 and minus 15 <laughs> AP. They're also uh, Assault 32. All right, eight. don't oversell them. They're still really oh, good. so good. They may as well be. That may as well be the stats of how good they, that's how good they went. <laughs> oh. All right, so Legacy of the Primarch. So this is where we get into the special rules for the army, or more specifically, the options that you can choose for special rules. Okay. So uh, you have Space Marine units and detachments, and it goes over what that exactly means. And you can't pick, like, Dark Angels for a Codex Marine chapter unit, right? Um, you also have uh, the Defenders for Humanity rule, which is to be expected. Right. It's, and also the Chapter Tactics rule. Um, and the only way that you don't get uh, the Space Marine uh, Chapter Tactics is if you take a super heavy auxiliary. Everything else is available uh, to, every, to everything. So... You can take, like, a White Scars dude on a bike as an auxiliary, and he's still going to get the benefits. Interesting. Yep. Yep. Wow. All right. That's neat. Um, so they did preview all of these uh, on their website previously, so I'm not going to go over the baseline chapter tactics. I just want to ask you, have you answer one question. In yes. your opinion, which one is the best? Uh, I think white, I think uh, Iron Hands are probably the best chapter tactic overall. Uh, they have the they have first of all their chapter tactic is three different things, which is a big deal. While else all the other ones are two. Um, I also think uh, Imperial Fists are very good and Crimson Fists are very good, and I would say that those are probably about the same as far as power level goes. All right, so you pretty much think that anything with a hand involved in its symbol is the best. Dude, I'm all about slapping people down, so that right. works really good for Got me. It. Yep. What about crosses? Anything with crosses? Are they any good? No, crosses are just a garbage piece of iconography, oh, okay. and anybody who puts one on their armor is just a sad, sad man. Got it. Um, I love White Scars thematically, and their new uh, chapter tactic, though, I was a little bit disappointed. It didn't seem like it got as much as some of the other ones. That's okay, though. Um, I'm just happy that they have their uh, an entire supplement to themselves and their own special rules and stratagems, so that just makes a huge difference for me. Yeah. It's, they've done a lot to really just flesh out and theme different Space Marine stuff. Oh, yeah, for sure. So that's the tactics. What's next, Danny? What's yep. on the next page? So the next page is if you, if you don't want to pay attention to those and you want to make your own chapter. All right. I don't like those. I'm going to use these. Well, some people, some people have done that. They have their own successor chapter. Sure. That they've, they've created their own little world in their mind and their story, and they play fluffy and thematic stuff. Um, but... Uh, you know, it's and I get that because I did the same thing with mine. That's why my sure. that's why my current competitive army is purple and gray, Primaris only ultramarines. Uh, sorry, you know, it's just it's what I painted a bajillion of. And uh, while I may be running them as ultramarines because they were playing better in this current edition before this codex, sure, I think that you know using some of these I might. Easily, it might be a fun way to do yeah, it too. And there's probably some really effective combos in here too. Yeah. Uh, I think easily. I like uh, you, you can take you know you can take stealth and um, uh, the the five up feeling of pain against mortals. Sure, you, you could do that. To, to uh, you could take bo uh, bolter fusillades, which lets you reroll ones to hit with bolt weapons, which they qualify what exactly those are previously. Yep. Um, and you could take duelists, so your guys are really good in duels, where anytime you roll an unmodified six to hit, 
uh, you get uh, you you automatically wound the target, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, that's uh, so that basically turns your entire army into infiltrators. And yeah, in close combat, which is awesome. Oh, is that in close combat? That's Not close shooting? combat. Oh, yeah. wow, that's really good. It's pretty cool. Um, so uh, they did include uh, for the recently re- the recent released uh, Blood Ravens rules. You can still make them with the Knowledge is Power rule and the Stalwart rule. You can still get the exact same uh, abilities. Oh, nice. So, like, yeah, I think Stalwart and Cover is a really durable choice. Seems like it, yeah. So you can only be wounded on a 3-up at best, and you automatically uh, uh, get Cover if you're more than 12 inches away, which yeah. is cool. So, yeah, so check these out. You can also just choose Inheritors of the Primarch and just pick one of the, spa- one of the chapter tactics from, uh, from the main chapters there. The first, uh, first founding chapters. Then we have Warlord traits. So now these are Warlord traits that are not Codex specific. Correct. Okay. So, there, well, there's both, right? You have some Codex specific ones, and then you also have other ones here as well. So you have normal ones, and then you have Vanguard ones. Uh, the Vanguard ones were uh, pretty much the same. I'm just trying to see if target priority is the same. That's one. Yeah, that one's still really good. Uh, yep, these are still all uh, pretty interesting. Uh, Storm of Fire is probably the best one out of the normal ones. Uh, that's any time a unit within six uh, rolls a six to hit, uh, the AP on that shot goes down by one. Okay. Now note that that doesn't stack, like I said before, with the Doctrine, so you can't get like a bunch of extra AP off that, but it works if you're in the not in a different Doctrine, right? Right, so if you have a bunch of uh, regular Bolter shooting dudes and you're in the Devastator Doctrine, yeah. then those guys can get the minus one, so Heck that's yeah. really good. That's not bad. No. Um, uh, otherwise, I don't think these change very much. Uh, Depth of the Codex is the same. Uh, Let's see, Architect of War is the same, Deadly Hunter is the same. Yeah, I think that these are all the same as well. Uh, the Crimson Fist one, they had three of them to choose from in their book, uh, or their last little supplement, and they only have the one where your guy gets back up from the dead Okay. Um, so uh, to choose from. So Yeah, but Zombie Warlord, still pretty good. Oh yeah, for sure, real good. Oh my god, Dave, here we are. We are at the crux of the codex, the biggest part, the most important. Hold on, Danny. I'm noticing that our SD card is is empty. We're gonna have to cut this off right here. Oh. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Good, good, good. All right. So let's go over these. I knew this was like a 30 minute segment. I, I cleared that SD card out. We're good. <laughs> you, you ramble on all you want. Oh, I've cleared myself out. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so armor of contempt, uh, aspect scan are the same. Uh, there's some new ones. We have suppression fire. Um, and so that's for a Whirlwind or a Thunderfire Cannon. You can fire it twice as long as the second time it shoots, it shoots at something out of line of sight. Dude. <laughs> Do what now? Yeah, you get to that's shoot awesome. it twice. Yeah. That's amazing. Really good. Oh, God, I got to get some super glue and put that model together. Now. <laughs> but great for a Whirlwind, right? I mean, that still is oh, really solid, too. War- yeah. It's good for both. Um, only in Death and Duty's End is the same. Which uh, is, that's the one that gets a... Fight on Death. A character or a unit. It's a character. Okay, because we had this discussion the other day because I had them... You're thinking of Honor of the Chapter. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, chapter Master went down one CP, which I thought was great. Nice. And they changed it to reroll to hit rolls, not reroll failed to hit rolls. So that means that you get to reroll uh, even if they have a minus to hit. That's, that's something that should have been done a long time ago, and I'm glad it's finally in. Um, it balances nicely, so... It's going to really affect these armies that depend on those minus to hits to be like effective. This is going to really kick them right in the balls. Which is fine. Coming for you, F- Eldar Flyers. Yeah, and Plague Bears. Suck it. I don't worry about them. They have to charge me. Uh, Death to Traitors is the same. That's Reverse Death to the False Emperor. Uh, Honor of the Chapter is the same. Um, let's see here. Yeah. Uh, Duty Eternal is a new one. This is a great stratagem for a Dreadnought. Um, you use this one whenever somebody targets a Dreadnought with a weapon. For the rest of that phase, it takes half damage from ranged weapons. Wow, that's really nice. I'm sorry. For the rest of that phase... So close combat too. So like if you wanted to use it Wait, in, no, no, in the no, close the combat is, phase. If you use it in close combat, like you could use it in any phase, right? Right. So but you can but you can use it in close combat or shooting. Right. So you can choose. So or Overwatch or a charge phase if you want to. Technically, you can use it in both if you'd like to. Or three times, whatever you need to do. Because you could take Overwatch and take half damage from Overwatch if you if you thought that you were really taking that much. Like if you, I was going to charge your repulsors, I might do that with the Dreadnought. Don't tell people that. <laughs> uh, we got flak missiles. 
Same. Same. Veteran Intercessors. Oh, remember this? Oh, so I don't have to take an entire detachment? I can just do it here now? Heck yes, you can. Oh. In addition, uh, they did change it a little bit and nerf it in that way. If you take a big squad of Intercessors, like if you take six or more, uh, you do have to pay two CP to upgrade the entire unit. Okay. But it does give them plus one attack. Yep. So that means those Intercessors are rocking four Fours. attacks each. Whew. That's a lot. Whew. Uh, then you've got uh, uh, Bolt Storm. Hey, remember this, Dave? This is one of the ones you had to be a veteran intercessor for. No longer. If, I'm so, sorry, what? So it does cost an additional CP to use. Okay. So before it was one CP, now it's two. Well, technically it would have been two CP to begin with because you had to spend one to get him into the detachment. To well, you had to spend that initial one, right? So there was a little bit more upfront spending. Right. Uh, but but I mean, you got less CP as the game went on. If you utilized it a lot, you get a little bit better value. So, you, so that doesn't mean that that detachment is defunct. You can still use it. It's still good. It's just you don't have to. Anymore. This might be a different way to run it, and you can get like cheaper. Uh, you can get cheaper veteran intercessors through that as well if is, you take big. Now, squads. is that only one squad, or can you make all your squads if you have enough CP? Veterans? Yeah. Yes, you can do as many squads as you want because this is before the game starts. Oh baby. Yep. Oh sweet Jesus. So this is a new one for repulsors only. Did you know that, Dave? That there was a repulsor strategy. I here? didn't. You stole the book from me when I made it to the, <laughs> when I made it to the warlord traits. <laughs> I haven't seen any of the stratagems. All right. So the hunter slayer missile uh, that allows you to fire basically like a uh, D three mortal wound rocket at whatever you want um, in the shooting phase. It doesn't count against. I'm your... sorry. Do do what now? Is this just repulsors or is it also yeah. repulsors executioners? One repulsor model. So I believe also executioners have the repulsor keyword. Oh. Do you have to have the missile launcher in order to do it? No. It's not a missile launcher. Oh. It's just something you get. Okay. Um, you have to shoot it at a vehicle or a monster. And they take D3 mortal wounds. You can only do it once per repulsor per game, if that makes sense. Yes. It's so. a repulsor hunter killer missile. Yep. That you don't have to pay points for, just CP. I'm sorry. Hold on. Oh! <laughs> okay. Uh, cluster mines, hellfire shells, same difference. Now, this one is great. I'm really happy they included this. Uh, Gravic Amplification. So if you have a Grav Cannon with a Grav Amp, you can use this on your unit. All of the Grav Cannons in the squad get to reroll fail to wound rolls and reroll damage rolls for that phase. Woof! Is that, that's like 6 CP? Uh, it's 1 CP. Oh, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yep, for sure. Real good. Um, then you have uh, Masterful Marksmanship. Uh, for your uh, stern guard, which I believe remain the same as well. That's plus one to wound. Um, rapid fire. So that's the intercessor one that turns their bolt rifles into rapid fire two guns. Oh, um, so that's, so nice. an, that's an amazing one there. And that combos up really well with another strat that we'll go over in a moment. Or orbital bombardment. Yeah, it's probably the same. It's the same. Chapter master or uh, warlord not moving, call down a strike. Yep. Yeah. Relics of the chapter, different. So can I ask you a question yep. really fast, Danny? One of the things the Impulsor can take is the ability to fire nothing else and call down an orbital bombardment. Can you also call down an... Um, uh, is there anything here where it reads that you cannot call down... No, you could do two of them if you wanted to. As long as you have the CP. It's three CP to use. Yeah. It's a lot. I don't know. Um, Relics of the Chapter is one CP. Flat. That's that's just giving you another uh, ability to give another relic. But you can only take one extra relic. You can't buy two extra relics. Okay. So you can only ever buy one relic from the space. So you can only ever have, if, even if your warlord comes from there, you can have two relics. Otherwise, you can only ever have one. Got it. Which is, I think, a good change. Yeah, relics are getting a little over, uh, they're, they're everywhere. There's a lot, and people spend a lot of yeah. CP on them before the game starts sometimes. All right, um, Hammer of Wrath, um, when you charge with a jump pack unit, uh, you can use it. E uh, each model that makes it within uh, one inch of an enemy unit, on yeah. a D6, you it's roll your, a five. It's your standard. On a five plus, they take a mortal wound, Yeah, okay. which is cool. Big guns never tire. You can choose a vehicle it doesn't, and move it. After moving, it doesn't count as having moved. Okay. Which is cool. So can I use it on an executioner to move a full distance and have it still count as moving less than half because it doesn't count as moving? No, it just doesn't count as, uh, it doesn't suffer the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons. Well, neither does a repulsor, so okay. Well, it, you can give your units power of the machine spirit for one turn and one turn only. I mean, every turn if you wanted to spend the CP on it technically, but All right. I wanted to sell it. Now this is a new one, this is the Terminator one that I talked about a little bit earlier. All right, so blow uh, me away with Fury this. Fury of the First. 
Use the stratagem in any phase. Select an, one Adeptus Astartes Terminator unit from your army. Until the end of that phase, when resolving an attack made by a model in this unit, add one to the hit roll. So for one CP, you can give plus one to hit for your Terminators. Wow, that's... That's really good. I think actually. that's really solid. I can't... God, stop. Don't... Tyson, do not watch this. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if uh, Deathwing are going to get that. That'd be kind of cool. I'm sure. All right, so uh, target sighted is 3 CP, um, which is good because it's really powerful, especially with the new Stalker Bolt Rifle ammo as being 2 damage. Right. Um, this is the same one from the Veteran Intercessor uh, uh, Specialist Detachment. Okay. So they get to shoot at a character. They get snipers, right. basically. Uh, and every 6 plus they uh, roll the wound, it's, it's, uh, it's one mortal wound as well. So it being 3 CP is pretty expensive, but... Ten intercessors with stalkers killing a character is also really good. So yeah, that's, uh, a, that's a potential. That would be a uh, thing because they're one shot each, right? Are they two shots at, at uh, on the heavy? Because I can't remember. One shot, one, one shot, shot each. So you got ten shots with a potential of twenty damage, uh, depending on the doctrine you have. On the first turn, it would be like so. They're thirty-six inch range too, right? So yeah, I believe so. You minus three AP. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Uh, tremor shells, same. Uh, still one of the best stratagems in the game. That's the half right. movement, yep. on the half movement on the Thunderfire. Uh, Wisdom of the Ancients, same. Still really good. Turn your dread out into a captain. Skyfire is for the Stalker and the Hunter. Um, it's 1 CP. Until the end of the phase, the model can only target units with fly. Uh, when resolving an attack made by that model, add 1 to the hit and 1 to the wound roll, and an unmodified wound roll of 6, double the damage inflicted. That's pretty good. I think that's really solid. Yeah. Now, Steady Advance is one that I talked about with that Rapid Fire stratagem for the Intercessors. And basically, uh, use the stratagem in your shooting phase when an Adeptus Astartes unit from your army is chosen to shoot until the end of the phase. For the purpose of the Bolter Discipline ability, uh, that unit uh, counts as if they remain stationary. So you can walk up 10 guys and still fire 40 shots out with that stratagem at 30 inches. So if somebody is like getting tricky on you, they're like, well, I'm going to make you move so you don't get bolter discipline, you only get 10 shots. I'd be like, well, no, I'm going to get 40 shots. Suck it. Which is great. Yikes. That's nice. All right. This one is amazing. All right. Sorry. No, no, go ahead. I'm, I'm like, all right, let me, what's amazing? Skilled riders. So this is for all you White Scar stands out there or people who like to use bikes. You can use it on Adeptus Astartes Biker or Land Speeder unit. If that unit moves that, that movement phase, it gets a 4-up invul. If it advances, it gets a 3-up invul. Now, White Scars can advance and charge still with their bikes. So that means if... You, and they have a stratagem born in the saddle where they can also shoot. So, you can move 20 inches with your bikers, shoot like normal, and assault, and have a 3-up invulnerable save. That's pretty good, Danny. I think that's awesome. <laughs> um, I, I can't, that's definitely going to see play. A lot of play. So, yeah, skilled riders... Real good. Yeah. All right. Um, and then you have uh, Hero of the Chapter. And this is a 1 CP one. Uh, and I think all the supplements have this as well. You can use an extra Warlord trait on a character. Which I thought was really cool. So same character or different character? Different character. All right. So and you, you have to have, have different multiples. Warlord traits. That's perfectly fine. It's pretty standard to see that sure. in just about every codex. So Transhuman Physiology. Your unit. You can use it... Uh, Let's see, it's enemy phase, I believe. Yeah, that's not a vehicle or a servitor. Um, until the end of the phase, uh, attacks can only wound you on a 4+. plus. So, is, is that only in the fight phase, or is that in the... No, whatever. Phase? Wow. Enemy phase. All right. So you're facing down that Gene Stealer neophyte squad with full of rock saws. You can be like, eh, that's cool. Uh, you're going to be wounding me on 4s instead of 2s or in 1s. Aberrants with stop signs? Sure. Mm. Pretty nice. solid. Yeah, that's very solid. Um, Vengeance for the... Oh, Vengeance of the Machine Spirit. This is one on a Repulsor. I'm sorry, say that again louder so that the people in the back can hear you. Oh, wow. I did not read this one before. This is really good, Dave. Vengeance of the Machine Spirit. Use a stratagem when Adeptus Astartes Land Raider model, Repulsor model, or Swarm Raven Gunship model from your army is destroyed. That model can either automatically explode... No thanks. Shoot with, one of its, shoot with one of its ranged weapons as if it were your shooting phase. Or make one attack with one of its melee weapons as if it were the fight phase. So now when a repulsor explodes, it's six inches D6 damage. Or if I'm rolling it, it's six inches, six damage. <laughs> Maximum, all the time. Ugh. That, that, dude, how many CP is that? 
Two. Two? Yeah. Wow, that's... I think you're going to be using that one. I nice. will. I will be using it to shoot. I will be using it to blow up when, if it's the last one I've got. Because that means the other two have already blown up on their own for free. Sure. Yeah. Uh, because, well, of my, because of my. I mean, let's rolls. make it the hat trick. Yeah. If you wouldn't want to disappoint your opponent. Well, that's probably how I'm going to kill the last of the Carnifexes that are on top of my. Repulsors. Oh, that's what makes sense. Yeah. That's really good. I like that. I like that a lot. That is. Uh, that gets my stamp of approval. <laughs> good. Good. Uh, tactical flexibility. It allows you to uh, combat squad in the course of the game. Same thing. Yeah. That's. Pretty standard. Now, adaptive strategy lets you either walk forward or walk back your uh, your dis your uh, discipline or your uh, uh, sorry, what is it? The uh, doctrine. Sorry. Oh, I so I thought adaptive strategy allowed you to move it forward one all the way. So it, technically, the way that it works is right now, if you don't use that stratagem, you are stuck at the assault. But you can go back to Devastator. You can start over from the beginning with this. No, you're thinking of the Ultramarines one. Oh, am I? Okay. The Ultramarines so have a different one? one. This one is walk forward so, or walk back? Use the strategy at the start of the battle round if there are any chapter character models from your army on the battlefield. Before you uh, change combat doctrine, uh, before you change which combat doctrine is active, if the assault doctrine is currently active, you can change it to the tactical doctrine that's now active. Alternatively, if the tactical doctrine is now active, you can change that to the devastator doctrine uh, is now active. So you can just, you can use it once per battle. You can just walk backwards one phase. Once per right. game. Nice. That's good. Yeah, I think that's really good. And then finally, you have gene rot might. So this is a primaris only stratagem. And what this allows you to do is anytime you roll a six to hit during the combat phase, you automatically do a wound. And that's one CP. So you, yep. you're you already hitting with a regular Intercessor squad that used to only hit on twos with a five-man squad. <laughs> on twos? Oh, I'm sorry, with two attacks. Uh, you're now hitting with three. If you make them veterans, you're hitting with four. Yep. Uh, and this allows you to do And then six is to hit, automatically wound. And then six is to hit, automatically wound. So those guys who are punching their lives out at strength four can... Against a knight. Against a knight can, can wound a knight. Oh, yeah. Easily. Auto wound a knight. Suck on that, knight players. And if you're in assault uh, doctrine, they're minus one AP. <laughs> Enjoy my minus one AP fists <laughs> for your four up save. So what a great selection of of. Uh, That's amazing. All this stuff is amazing. There's so many good ones, and like, it makes the army so much better. The, it may, it doubles the output. It, I mean, it just does so much stuff to really, really uh, ramp up the ability of your guys to do damage. I, I don't even know if we need to go on any further through this book. There's probably nothing else to talk about. Oh, wait, what about relics, Dave? Oh, relics! Yeah. Chapter relics, okay. All right, so uh, there's a bunch. Um, you have uh, the armor and dominus. It's pretty standard. Uh, yeah, two up, and then once per turn, once per game, you can boost up to a three-up invul. Right. Uh, Shield eternal is a three-up invul, and then also... Uh, Half's damage, right? Nope. Oh, they changed that? Yeah, they changed it. Um, it just gives you a five-up feel no pain. I mean, permanently. Yeah. Ooh. So you're a three-up involved. Five-up, five-up feel no pain. You don't have to trigger it to get it or anything. It's just nope. automatic. You get a five-up. That's really good. It's really good. I think it's solid. That's a uh, that's a huge it's increase. Depend. It depends on what you're playing against, but I think it's probably better. Uh, probably. Unless you're running Iron Hands, in which case then it's kind of eh, just uh, mediocre. That's just better a little bit. But you don't have that anyway, so. Sure. Uh, Banner of the Emperor Ascendant, uh, this boosts three inches to uh, uh, the range of your banner abilities. Um, so it do And it doesn't allow to give you plus one to your roll to see if your guys get to shoot again. So now it just increases your range, so you can actually just get more dudes in. Yeah, you auto-pass leadership tests, and you subtract one from the leadership test of enemy units within nine inches as well. So that's... That's not bad. It's some changes. It feels about this... I mean, it feels a little it's bit It's probably better. a little bit worse, to be honest. That's I what I said. feels okay. a little bit worse. <laughs> um, yeah, because a four-up versus a three-up to get back up and shoot your Hellblasters again is pretty good. So. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, Teeth of Terra is... Uh, I believe it, only, it lets you make two extra attacks before, and now it lets you make three. Otherwise, that's unchanged. I'm noticing a trend that a lot of things are just getting more attacks. Oh, hey, look like at that. It's they... just better. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you've got the Primarch's Wrath, which is a bolt gun. Uh, um, it replaces a Mastercrafted bolt gun or a regular bolt gun. And it makes your bolt gun rapid fire 2, strength 5, minus 1, 2 flat. Yeah, it's pretty solid. Pretty I good. actually have that on my Tech Marine right now. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's not bad. Um, Burning Blade got way better. 
Um, so this is a power sword upgrade. Uh, it gives you plus three strength, minus five AP, and uh, two flat damage instead of one flat damage, which is really good. That's way better. Yeah, it's way better. Uh, so that's a great weapon. So you just get extra attacks with dishing out a beat down. Minus five AP? Yeah. Woo! Yeah, no two plus armor save for you, son. Yeah. Oof. All right. Uh, then we've got uh, Purgatorius, which is a pistol. Uh, two shots, minus three, uh, or sorry, two shots, strength five, minus three, two damage. It replaces yeah, like right. a chaplain pistol or something? A bolt pistol or a heavy bolt pistol. Okay. Not the absolver bolt pistol, so I don't think the sorry, chaplain can do it. heavy bolt pistol? Yeah, the Reavers have heavy bolt pistols. Right. Okay. Uh, Interesting. A Reliquary of Galathmore. Um, this is Primaris only. Uh, when, the psych when a psychic test is taken for an enemy model within 18 inches of here, subtract one from it. In addition, when a psychic test is failed for an enemy model within 18 of it, uh, roll a d6 on a 4 up, they take d3 mortal wounds. That's kind of... It's not bad. Yeah. Uh, this is a reprint of a relic from the uh, Specialist Attachment as well. Okay. You have the Bellicose Bolt Rifle. Um, this is a, a mastercrafted uh, auto bolt rifle, so unlike a Primaris uh, captain yep. uh, or lieutenant. Yep. Um, this is a 24-inch range, Assault 4, Strength 5, Minus 1, 2 flat damage. I mean, that doesn't seem I think that's good. good. So it's probably amazing. It's, I, I would say it's probably better than Primarch's Wrath. Yeah, it's better than Primarch's Wrath all but, the time. But, I mean, you could spend CP to get an extra Relic, so you could have Primarch's Wrath. Yeah, why not do both? And that. So, sure. yeah. It's pretty solid. Uh, you have Lament, which is a, uh, a Mastercrafted Stalker Bolt Rifle. Uh, heavy one, strength five, minus two, three damage. Anytime you successfully wound, it deals one mortal wound in addition. So, four damage if you... Pretty much. Yeah. If you get it through. That's then, a one-shot um, support characters. Yep. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Although you can't normally target them separately, so that would have to be something that you did. Uh, I like this Ghost Weave Cloak. I think that's great. That's a Phobos-only relic. Um, it makes your character minus one to wound. You have to have a Camel Cloak, but you're minus one to wound. So it's not the lieutenant, but the librarian. Yep, and uh, the captain. Or the captain. Yep. Or, you know, a sergeant. No. Because you can't give relics to the sergeants? Nope. Not in this book. Not in this book. I'm getting ahead of myself. Sorry. Strike that. Ignore me. That's good for the captain and the librarian. Really for sure. Good. It's really good. Um, then you have the Tome of Malkador. It's a librarian. You get an extra power that you, can, uh, that you have access yep. to, which is good. It could be from any discipline, though, or is it just the librarian's discipline? From the, from the psychic discipline they have access to. Okay. Which is cool. Because that means it could potentially be one of the ones from uh, one of the supplements or this book. Uh, because there's two psychic disciplines in this book. Uh, Benediction of Fury is a chaplain uh, relic Crozius. Uh, it makes the Crozius plus one strength, an extra minus one AP, and an extra damage. Um, and... If you do an unmodified wound roll of six, it deals one mortal wound in addition to any other damage. That's really good. Yep. Uh, the Honor uh, Vehement is like a relic uh, purity seal. <laughs> um, basically, that lets any unit within six inches replace uh, Shock Assault with a flat plus one attack. All the time. Okay. Which is not bad. It's not great, but it's not no, bad. It's, it seems like there are better relics to take than that, so... And then you have the Vox Aspiritum, which is Primaris only, and that lets you boost all of your auras by three inches. All or just the one that it's on? Well, the model, just that model with it, okay. boosts its auras three inches. Yeah. So just the model it's on. Yep. Yeah. Including something like, yeah, I don't know, if your captain has an Omni Scrambler, that's probably pretty good. <laughs> I, don't think it, I, I don't think the, uh, the captain has the Omni Scrambler. Oh, really? I thought he did. No. We'll, we'll talk about it afterwards. we got to get no, through no, this I, book. Oh, sorry. We're yeah. almost done. We're almost done. <laughs> We're almost done. Let's get through this book. All right. So, Librarius Discipline, not a ton has changed in here. They did reduce uh, Null Zone to a 7 casting. I saw that. I like that. Yeah. Because it was an 8 before. Uh, still 12 inches. Uh, Mighty Heroes uh, is uh, still one model. Veil of Time is a unit. Uh, that stayed the same. Uh, Psychic Scourge is the same. Fury of the Ancients is the same. Psychic Fortress. I thought Psychic Fortress was more short range, but I don't really remember because I didn't see it taken a ton. Uh, but that one is kind of good in this book because I think you might want to cast it on primary Marines that are your screening with because you can give them a Fort Field of Pain against Mortal Wounds. Yeah, that's pretty... I mean, that's decent. Yeah. 
Um, and then uh, Obscuration is exactly the same. I checked those ones for yeah, sure. Yeah, that's, that's so new that it's not something I expected. Yeah, that's, the, that's the, of course, that's it's the Phobos Librarian. Uh, so. And then you have Litanies of Battle for your chaplains. All right. So Litanies of Battle are just like the Dark Apostle. Yep, you need to roll at the start of the battle round. You pick one, of, so your your chaplain will have his base one, which is Litanies of Hatred, um, and so that's the, these are basically chapticles, which is that sounds like testicles. I don't like the way. They well, so does that. canticles <laughs> for uh, for the so. All right, but so you roll. Is there a, is there a rule where you can roll or you can pick? You can pick, but once you pick, you can't do it again because they can only be used once unless you're rolling, right? Uh, no, you at the start of the game you pick one. Okay. Or you can roll if you want to. And that, that one is in effect for the entire game? No, that's the one that you have the option to use. So you have two of them that you can choose from. So he normally has litanies, litanies of hatred, which is reroll misses and close or reroll to hit rolls in close combat. Okay, which is what they're which is solid. Yeah. Which is what they normally had before, but now you have to roll a three up to get it. Okay. Or you can pay or you can use one of these ones instead. But you have to pick it at the start of the game and that's the one you know. Okay. And so you don't you can't change it later no. have it offer a different, You're stuck with it. different prayer to Sigmar to get something else. Sigmar? What? Is that what what you game do? are you what game are I you playing? Alright. Um uh so they have uh Litany of Death. Um anytime you lose a wound to a mortal wound on a five plus you ignore it. Okay, so the Not chaplain bad. gets a five up feel no pain. Mortal wound uh black for a Templar style. Sorry, for a unit within six. Oh okay. So you pick a unit within six, they get that ability. Oh that's pretty good. Yeah, I so like they that. get the Black Templar chapter or half of Black Templar chapter tactic. The best part of the Black Templar chapter tactic. Very well could be. Uh Catechism of Fire. So you select a friendly unit within six. When resolving to attack me with a ranged weapon, uh the model in the unit, uh against the closest visible enemy unit, uh add one to the wound roll. So a plus one to wound against the closest unit is pretty pretty nice, that's especially nice. if you're like volume firepower unit. That's pretty solid. Especially if you got somebody right in front of you getting ready to charge you. Sure, or you have you know forty intercessors with bolt rifles and you just want to really kill what's in front of you, like a chaos knight. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I always want to kill a chaos knight if yeah. it's in front of me, so that makes sense. Uh, Exploration of rage. Uh, this anytime you target a unit within six, uh, anytime you make a melee attack with that unit on a six, you can make one additional attack. Okay, not bad. Uh, Mantra of strength is for the chaplain. It gives him plus one attack and strength and one to the damage characteristics of weapons that he has. So I can see that being taken by a lot of uh, Blood Angels and Death Company, right? Because they use their chaplains. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 not bad on them. Plus, you can give them the relic. Crozius from this book, which make, would make it damage four. That's pretty good. That's pretty solid. Yeah. Or if he's a white scar, damage five if they charge. That's pretty good too. Yep. Uh, a recitation of focus. Um, basically, you get to pick a friendly unit within six, and their ranged weapons get plus one to hit. That's pretty nice. Wow. Especially on that That's Devastator nice, yeah. squad or something like that. And then you have Canicle of Hate. Um, this lets you consolidate and pile in six inches instead of three. Which is pretty tactical. I think that's, that's actually a really like good a one. Lot. That could be very powerful. So, uh, yeah. So that's S Space Marines. So other than that, yep, uh, that's Space Marines. Grab your screenshots now, boys. Danny's flipping fast because we're at the end of the book. And, and there's tactical objectives. And there's tactical objectives. For when you want to play just for fun with your friend. Which are really fun. They're actually really fun. I yeah, like tactical are. objectives. All right. So that kind of goes over our Space Marine, uh, a Space Marine review. Um, if you guys uh, have any questions, feel free to comment on this video. Um, or if you want to just jeer us, do that too. We yeah, like, we, lo we lo yeah, we love that. We're good like that. Yeah, sure. Uh, you're a jerk, but we like you. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you like the video, subscribe to our channel or uh, like the video or comment. We love the comments. Uh, um, down below, you can find info on our Patreon if you'd like to subscribe. If you don't, it's also fine. We do yeah. this because we love it. We do. We love this hobby. Yeah. More than we probably should. That's what our <laughs> wives keep saying. That's right. Anyway, so uh, I've been Dave. And this has been Danny with Mob Rules. Thanks for tuning in.